then there is no limit. They just march on. But let's just leave German society. We were explaining how the state of Kosovo was born. Such a lovely creation. So innocent. A lovely baby that grows up with much love. Sucking the east and sometimes more the west. Mother Teresa calls Bill Clinton on the phone. This is a true story. Or, to be more precise, this could be a true story if Mother Teresa had lived longer. Altogether, <coughs> the following text is inspired by the Albanian writer Ismail Kadare, who still hasn't won the Nobel Prize yet. <laughs> but this is not what the story is about. Hello, Bill? Hey, who is it? Mother Teresa here. Bill, my son, can you hear me? Hey, who is it? Is that Bill? Bill Clinton? Yes. It's me, Bill Clinton. Bill, my son. Mother Teresa here, can you hear me? <laughs> what can I do for you, Mom? Do you need cash? Bill, my son, do something about my Albanians. What should I do? <laughs> Bomb the Serbs. Bomb those bastards. <laughs> Not destroying my Albanians. Okay, I'll do it. I'm calling Madeline Albright right now. That's right, son. That's right, do it. I'm calling Madeline Albright right now. She's tougher than me. I don't have the heart to do it. Bomb those heartless bastards. Bomb them to tits. I'm not gonna say bits. <coughs> Mother Madeline can do it. She was a refugee herself, and she's more sensitive about this. That. Hello? Bill? Can you hear me? Do it as fast as you can. Save my Albanians. I can't hear you, Mom. Mom? That's right. Do it. I'll do it, Mom. I'll do it for your sake. In a survey of Americans in New York, the majority thought that Mother Teresa is a man. Only joking. The Macedonians call her daughter of Macedonia. The Albanians call her Albanian daughter. Whereas in India, they call her Kata. <laughs> and precisely because she's Albanian, the Serbs call her Pussy. <laughs> Germans believe she's a mythic being from those tales. Of Kadman. The French confuse her with Gandhi. They keep on apologizing. For colonialism. And when she was recently sanctified <coughs> by the Pope, 30 planes full of Albanians went to Rome, where they took over the church, and had a concert to celebrate her sainthood. Such a national masturbation had not been seen before.
Gun Christmas. The weather was bad in New York. It had been raining for three days, and I felt that it would never stop. I was bored. I haven't slept well, and I was exhausted. I was looking through the window at the river <laughs> and thinking about the past. About the time when, together with my family, we <coughs> celebrated Christmas. At Christmas, it usually rained during the day and started to snow at noon. I, I have never, never liked the rain. rain. I'm a woman of the sun. And again, I think about it. <coughs> and I'm overjoyed that the weather is good over there. The sky is as clear as tears. <laughs> they tell me at lunchtime this is very important. Otherwise, we couldn't begin. I sit, but can't stay still. I go out and go to the window again. Time passes very slowly. I have to do it, I think. I snip the scent of the flowers on the table. I sit down, take the telephone, and say to him, General Jackson, this is Madeline Albright. Be a general. Give the order. Send out the place to drop as many bombs as possible all over Serbia, but especially Belgrade. <coughs> general Jackson agrees. And I realize he did not sleep last night, and perhaps will not for many other nights. And while well, once again, go to the window and watch the irritating rain falling, on television, they show footage of the first airplane setting off for Serbia's skies. Oh, no, I say to myself. There was no other way. I think how wonderful it will be the first bomb to drop fell on Milosevic's head. But I know that the reality will be quite different. Again, I sniff the plums. Dismissed! <laughs> Madeline Albright, former Secretary of State of the United States of America. Now, International consultant in the Stonebridge Albright Group, a company focused on emerging markets. That's round about the area where the bombs did their work earlier. <laughs> Madam Snake, as Saddam Hussein called her once, loved deeply by the Albanians and hated fiercely by the Serbs. Dozens of young girls born in refugee camps in 1999, bear her name with pride in a sign of respect and lasting love. For the bombs dropped so precisely on Serbia. And for those bombs on Chinese embassy in Belgrade, where it was rumored that Milosevic went secretly to learn Chinese. Carla Del Ponte counts the cost of war in Kosovo. Total number killed during the war in Kosovo? 15,000 more or less. That's a lot. Did we bring enough nylon bags for the corpse? I think so, but we can still order more. <laughs> Do it. Order more. Each corpse deserves at least an island bag. We must treat the dead with dignity. And make sure the bags can be recycled. So is set an example to the local residents <coughs> about how to protect the environment. The number raped. 20,000 women and 1,000 men. Wow! It seems it was actually a war and not a joke. Collect all the stories. Recorded on camera, there is no need to see any faces. They can appear in shadow or 
You can manipulate the boys. There are plenty of directors in Europe. Perhaps you can find a child born as a result of rape and then ask her how she feels. You can use these stories for documentary films. We brought a donation of 300 cameras. I think that's sufficient. Very good. And let a book of the stories be published. Why not? Let the voice of the victims be heard. There is no need to give them ethnic or religious details or any <coughs> other information about their origin. Let it just be stories of anonymous women raped in Kosovo. Children killed? 3,000. Okay, noted. Send their families a free book called Preschool Civic Education. In this publication, they added the chapter Climate Change in the Antarctic. And I think this will be of interest to the people. Houses burned? Almost half of Kosovo. Oh, did you send tents? Oh, yes. Very good. I hope you took care to remove the symbol of Red Cross. It could offend them as they're Muslims. Instead of the symbol, just write the words Red Cross. And underneath that, give with love from the Christian people of the European Union. Mass graves? About 50. So few. We brought a donation of 200 bulldozers. How come there are so few mass graves? Send back the bulldozers as they are not needed. Can we keep them? They can be useful to open some roads. No, that's outside the contractual agreement. They were brought for mass graves and they can only be used for that and nothing else. <coughs> Return them to Brussels where they came from. <coughs> Eyes extracted. Some 700. Count them more precisely, please. Research, engage volunteers, we need good data. Damn it, eyes are an important part of the body. If it is about a hand or a leg, we can take a guess, but when it comes to eyes, we have to have precise data. Okay, <laughs> what we should do with the eyes we collect, Madame Del Ponte? We'll open a museum. The Museum of the Eyes of Peace. We can decorate parts of the wall with his eyes. We could even invite an expert from Brussels to make a lovely design. Or why not invite that well-known artist, Marina Abramovich? She might have an interesting idea about this. I heard that she crossed the Adriatic Sea by foot from Serbia to Italy. <laughs> but Serbia doesn't have a sea border. Really? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Property looted? A lot. Very good. Noted. <coughs> I knew before I came. They were skilled at stealing. Organs trafficked illegally? About... Ten. What? Hold on. Oh, sadness touch the sky. May earthquake flatten it. May a volcano erupt over the same land. Bastards, criminals, heartless, cannibals. Kidneys? Yes. And in some cases, victim, victims had their livers extracted. Hearts? No. Oh. At least they didn't extract any heart. They'll see. I'll investigate one by one. I'll show them. I'll clean that country from those bastards. So they dare to do organ trafficking? What bastards? <laughs> Yeah. 
I am Marina Abramovic. And I am Ulay. <laughs> what you are about to see will be shocking. This is not theater. It's a reality. Theater is deception. Maestre. <coughs> Illusion. Illusion. Whereas what we are about to do is the truth. Estreola. This knife is real. These scissors are real. Deception. Maestre. Illusion. Illusion. Truth. Estreola. Illusion. Illusion. Deception. Maestre. <coughs> As you can see, there are no picture bottles nearby that we could use it as blood, like we do it on stage. But there will be blood, a real blood, and there will be an injury, a body incision. What's incision? It's a cut. <coughs> what we are about to do will be shocking. Please, if there are pregnant women in the audience, we ask you to close your eyes or to leave. If you have a weak heart, or you are sensitive, or you are a child under 18 years, you are advised to leave the room. Are there any underage people here? Yes? Please, if you are underage, leave the room. This is in your own interest. This scene contains elements that some people may find disturbing, offensive, distressing. Disturbing, offensive, distressing. Please remain calm. If you want to shout, you can shout, but don't do anything like, for example, throwing chairs at us or any other hard object. We've been planning this for a long time. That's why we ask for your patience and your support. In particular, there's this one delicate moment when we'll ask you to hold your breath, not to scream, and not even to raise your eyebrows. Are you ready? What we are about to do will be shocking. Okay, let's do it. I, Marina Abramovic, have decided to donate my kidney to Ulay. Whereas I, Ulay, have decided to donate my kidney to Marina Abramovic. Marina, Ulay, kidney. Marina, Ulay, kidney. Marina, Ulay, kidney. Kidney. It is a peaceful exchange of organs. This is to strengthen our loving relationship. And we are going to do this in your presence. Without an assistant of a doctor. Without an anesthet anesthetist. anesthetist. Now, I'm going to stick a knife into my body. <laughs> the tip of the knife slips slightly and cuts my skin. The trickle of blood splashes on my body. Marina, stop, stop, we can't carry on. There's a child at the stage. Please, what is this child doing here? We can go on. This is an abuse of a work of art. <laughs> With a live performance that was designed to be shocking. Fuck. in her eyes, German melancholy, <coughs> for everything non-German, for hungry children in Ethiopia, and for the war in former Yugoslavia that she never understood, for Joschka Fischer, <coughs> whom she never forgave wearing green military boots when NATO bombed Serbia, anxiety in her eyes when she reads into Deutsche Zeitung about organ trafficking in Kosovo. And again, she is terrified one lovely summer day when her Turkish neighbor opens the window of his house and spits on the lovely German asphalt on Haydn Banished House.
are missionaries of peace. We go from one place to another, from one mission to another. We bring peace. Our homeland is peace and stability. Our houses are wounds of war. We provide consultancy. We design tenders. We manage budgets. We receive draft proposals. We guarantee peace from our local and central offices. We go from one party to another. We are the biggest industry in the world. The industry of humanitarian workers. Protectorates are growing to handle it. There are more and more crises in the world. Where to go first? Where to get stuck? We strengthen democracy in poor countries. We install neoliberal politics. Reconstruction, retendering, rearranging. The local mediators are our right hand. Blunt translators and assistants, 100% local. The locals are obliged to us for our work, our sweat for their country, for our knowledge, advice, and commitment, obligation. Like a slave to the one that grants him freedom. Damn it! Kosovo is no longer safe. Unexpectedly, everything started to work. Slowly, but surely, is functioning. Kosovo, for us, was a mission with five stars. <sighs> And now, when our tears have dried, Syria calls us, our new mission. <laughs> what if we destroy we have to rebuild? More lovely than it was before, our expertise matters. Madeleine Albright remembers NATO bombing in Serbia. <coughs> During the war in Kosovo, every day I had a phone conference with the ministers of internal affairs of NATO member states. I was in the phone with British Spanish, German, French, Italians, all at the same time. Arrives in Pristina. 
plain lands in a cloud of dust. Above the gravel runway at Pristina Airport, the door opens slowly. Like the bar door in a western movie. Can you hear me, Carla? I am not ready. Carla exits. Look in her head. I have to find an organ. Anywhere and from anyone. <laughs> to the hills covered in dust. I want to buy from a poor guy who needs the money. To the gray sky. <coughs> Is it a pure anti-human act? I wonder. To the road, to the side where tired cows graze. How did you become so insensitive? Beautiful Carla de Ponte Blue. You have always been like that, Carla. You were a stone-hearted woman and you still are. With good features. A clear gate. How can you not feel bad for your brother? <laughs> a wonky nose. It's not just that you didn't have the courage to give me your own kidney. Then lips, blue eyes. And now you're judging me because I want to buy one? White hair. Like, like the gold of Kosovo underground mines. Shame on you, Carla. Shame on you. She descends the stairs and touches the gravel. To the night that you're my sister. The breeze lifts her dress. <coughs> I want a kidney. Soft cotton kidney shell. Made with love and tears in Bangladesh. Kidney shell. National Ballet of Kosovo. Young dancers of the Kosovo National Ballet. Learn their steps with Elis Nikci. <laughs> Elis Nikci, besides teaching ballet, was also the bodyguard of the former president of Kosovo, Ibrahim Rugova, known as the pacifist and Gandhi of Kosovo. <laughs> Elis Nikci came once a week to the ballet studio. From the residence of President Rugova, he entered the room. Greeted his young ballet students, left his bulletproof vest on the table, and hung his revolver in the clothes hooks. <clears throat> and then, free, without the weight of the revolver and the bulletproof, bulletproof vest, he danced with the ballet students. And Elis Nikchi danced, like long ago in the 90s. Before Milosevic shut down the Albania Ballet Company in Kosovo. <laughs> and Elis Nikci was thinking, what if while I'm dancing, someone traps and kills Ibrahim Rubova? <gasps> <laughs> After 60 minutes, Elis Nikci stopped the class. He said goodbye to his ballet students. He put on his bullet. He put his gun in his belt and then he returned again to Ibrahim Rukhova. <laughs> Real. From a very early time, I understood 
that you only learn from things you don't like. If you do things you like, you just do the same shit. You always fall in love with the wrong guy because there is no change. It's so easy to do things you like. But then the thing is, when you are afraid of something, go for it. Face it. You become a better human being. People ask why there are so few female artists who succeed. Why? It's because women are not ready to sacrifice as much as men. Women, they want a family, they want a husband, they want to have children, and to be an artist. And they can't. It's impossible. I don't agree. No. Get up, get up. If you're a woman, it's almost impossible to establish a relationship. Sweetheart, you are too much for everybody. It's too much. The woman always has to play this role of being fragile and dependent. And if you're not, they are fascinated by you. But only for a little while. Because then, they want to change you. And then they want to crush you. And then, <laughs> then they leave. So, lots of lonely hotel rooms, baby. Being unwanted, and loved, and cared for, forgotten by everybody, is a much greater poverty than the person who has nothing to Hey! I have found the paradox that if you love until it hurts, there is no more hurt. Only more love. That's so true. Yeah. I love fashion too. Who says if you have red lipstick and red nail polish, you're not a good artist? Let's have a smoke. Yes. Be faithful in small things. Because it's in them that your strength lies. I have always dreamt of this perfect man who does not want to change me. <laughs> but I'm so not a marriage material, it's terrible. But my dream is to have those lovely Sunday mornings, eating breakfast and reading newspaper with someone. I'm so old-fashioned in real life, but I'm so not old-fashioned in art and I believe in true love. Me too. So perfect. <laughs> happy said it will happen. Right now, no. no. See, I have no space. Life has been good to me. Lots of pain. But it's okay. When I do things, I do them properly. And then this other Teresa. Marina comes and she's so fragile and so weak and wants to eat ice cream. <laughs> I think women are stronger anyway. Yes. I mean, the moment the woman has the power to give birth, it already makes her a superior yeah. human being, no yeah. matter what. Exactly, yeah. like the greatest destroyer of peace is <coughs> abortion. Oh. No. Because if a mother can kill, my <laughs> own child. What is left for me is to kill you and for you to kill me. If you are a baker making bread, then you are a baker. But if you make the best bread in the world, you are not an artist. But if you bake the bread in the gallery, then you're an artist. <laughs> the context makes the difference. Nice. Yes. Your ego can become an obstacle to your work. If you start believing in your greatness, it is the death of your creativity. Kids from 12 to 18 who normally don't go to the museum, who don't give a shit about performance art or don't even know what it is, started coming to my show because of Lady Gaga. <laughs> I'm her inspiration. And now I am like a fire.
fucking bread, like like jeans, like Coca-Cola. <laughs> Woody Allen has a wonderful line. Today I am a star. Tomorrow, what will I be? An asshole. <laughs> a black, black hole. <laughs> That's very important to know. That you can have the moment, but then you can lose the moment. Wow. Whoa. I'm not I'm not sure how heaven will look like. But I know that when the time comes for God to judge us, he will not ask you how many good things have you done in your life. No. Rather he will ask how much how much love have you put into what you did. I don't know anything about the afterlife because I haven't been there yet. <laughs> It's love, it's love to be real. It must hurt, it must cost, and it must empty us of ourselves. People, they have so much pain inside them that they don't even realize it, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Happiness yeah. comes from the full understanding of your own being. If you judge people, you don't have the time to love them. Yeah. yeah. True when people ask me where I am from, I never say Serbia. I always say I come from a country that no longer exists. <laughs> In a rainy terrified German woman ate salted chips. And watched a Hollywood movie that had overwhelmed her. Like a hopeless devil. A science fiction film in which terrible things happen. Near her, Marcus, her dog, playing with a plastic bomb. And every now and then, he also watched the film. And when the terrified German woman went to be because she was bursting, Marcus unintentionally touched the remote control and changed the channel. And the documentary film is on ZDF about organ trafficking in Kosovo. Ah! on television. About some monstrous crimes that had occurred in Kosovo. Or, to be politically correct, suspected crimes. Because international justice hasn't still given its verdict. And then, the terrified German woman released a cry full of pain. Project 
social mercenaries. The unemployed and the idle. The adventurous and the despairing. Set up for Kosovo in 1999. in a new mission of capitalist humanism. They didn't want development or well-being. But political stability. The powerful come and the powerful go. The European Superman of Humanitarian NGOs. <laughs> they eat a lot of food and they get paid well. <coughs> they like Brussels. Brussels? Because they are nice people. <laughs> they eat lots of salads and greens like cows. <laughs> Have applied for economic asylum in the EU. 
between October 2014 and March 2015. Among the asylum seekers, there was also a cat with speckled eyes. Unemployment is as high as 40%, a bit worse than in Palestine. The unemployed with homemade brandy drown their sorrows. They founded a special <coughs> task force to investigate crimes. A special task force to protect minorities. A special task force for cultural heritage. A special task force to protect the special task force. <laughs> <laughs> Showtime. An organ. 
organ seeker and an organ donor meet in a plane that is going to Pristina, which is where the organ transplant clinic is located. They look each other in the eyes. Their palms are sweaty. They are silent. And then, silent again. One of them looks through a window, and the other looks at the map in the in-flight magazine. And it's surprised that on that map, Kosovo is still depicted as part of Serbia. Then, the stewardess serves them some juice. continue talking for a little, but not for long. The airplane is now approaching Pristina. It's foggy. The airplane shakes a little. European manual for murders. If you kill a man, you are a murderer. If you kill a few men, you are a terrorist. And if those few men you kill are in Europe or America, in the eyes of the Western media, you are a Muslim terrorist. If you kill thousands of people, you will be called a dictator. And in the Balkan, you will get a warm room in that hall. Whereas in Serbia, you will be declared a national hero. And Pita Hanke will take part in your funeral. And Emir Kusturica will be your eternal fan. <laughs> If you take out someone's kidney and throw it in the rubbish bin, you will be a murderer forever. But if you put that kidney into a freezer box and send that freezer box to a medical clinic and someone in need takes the kidney and you are paid $300,000 for this service, then the whole world will be horrified and the anxiety of that terrified German woman will get worse. The foundation of human existence will be shaken and the moon will refuse to rise for at least two nights in a row. Well, in order to be correct, we should know that it matters who the victim is, from whom you took the 
kidney. Because taking the kidney of a white man horrifies the world more than taking a kidney of a black man. The kidney of European man matters more than the kidney of an Indian man. The kidney of a Serb matters more than the kidney of an Albanian or a Bosnian. And when a European Christian kills dozens of innocent people, he is rehabilitated in the clinic for the mentally ill. A bomb, when it explodes, throws more dust in Brussels and in Paris than it does in Istanbul or Damascus. <laughs> Ambulance is carrying a patient from Bangladesh. From his room in the district of Dardania and Pristina to the medical clinic out of Pristina. The patient Shamim is returning to the clinic again. After an effective complication that emerged two days after he sold his organ. Time 16.5. The sirens are wailing and the ambulance is moving fast. Shamim, the man from Bangladesh, sweat is on his waxing face. He grips the edge of his bed in the ambulance. The ambulance passes among the cars that let it pass. But the road is blocked at the roundabout. Two uniformed policemen put a yellow cordon across. <laughs> and are asking the cars to wait. Because something important is happening in town. About 30 women, marathon runners, are running downhill toward the finish line. On both sides of the narrow road, the public is clapping, encouraging the woman to finish the race. They don't have far to go, and most another two kilometers. Run, Lola! Run! When the crowd is chanting, when the medicals up, up approaches the policeman, the policeman gestures to him to stop. And do wait, the marathon has to finish. There has to be a winner today in Kosovo. Shamim grits his teeth and tries to hold it together. He's losing his strength. He's thinking of the European man. To whom, two days before, he donated his kidney. The ambulance siren is wailing. The ambulance is in the same place. It hasn't moved an inch. The driver moves the hole. The policeman gestures at him to stop. The marathon has to finish. And a female marathon runner could win the race. Run, Lola, run! The women are running and Lola runs too. Sweat pours of them and drops into Pristina's asphalt main road. That road that leads to the medical trail. <coughs> Energy, passion, fever, fear. Lola is leading Penny Knight all the women. Run, Lola, run! Shamim doesn't know anything about the marathon. He doesn't know much about Pristina. He knows nothing about Lola. The female marathon runner who has to win the race. 
Shamim, Joseph, and Timson trying to stay alive. Until he gets to the medical clinic. The ambulance driver loses his horn again. And then the constable policeman frowns. He takes off his hat and goes to the ambulance. What's the rush? Can't you see you cannot pass? I have a man who is ill. I have to take him to the clinic. It will be over soon in three minutes, not a second more. Shamim. The marathon has to finish. We have to have a winner tonight in Kosovo. That's what the policeman says, and then he asks about the patient. Shamim, the poor guy, don't you returning inside the ambulance? Dying, dying. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, <coughs> one, and... Lola crosses the finish line. She raises her hands up in victory. And she throws herself into her waiting husband's arms. The policeman removes the yellow cordon. The ambulance moves so fast. In that long historic marathon, Kosovo had a winner that day. But Shamim never knew. <laughs> he told them that. He died two minutes before arriving at the clinic. To be exact, on September 13, 2008, 1703. <coughs> the final scene of this play is a reality TV show. The audience is confused, some of them leave the room, and the curtain falls. If there's a curtain. If not, then just turn the lights out and the play finishes.
but you are not responsible for my life. And therefore, you cannot stop me from doing what I want. Of course. But now that I know what you want to do, I will follow you. And if you decide to have an illegal transplant, I will denounce you to the police. Come! An illegal transplant is a crime, Carlito! <laughs> this international principle applies to everyone. Then it has to apply to my brother too. And while this conversation could go on for weeks, dear audience, we have a surprise for you. Welcome, Zora. This man you see is a sir. He is a poor man on the edge of the suicide. He's called Zora. I want to give my kidney voluntarily to this man in need. Shouts of joy, shouts of bitterness, tears, cries, spitting. All of this is such a short space of time and in our reality show, unbelievable. Oh, you're an angel, Zora. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know if I should accept your kidney. I mean, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> this was unexpected. I don't know what to think about it. In this complex situation, we have an organ seeker, an organ donor, and a confused woman. <laughs> what labyrinth! <laughs> As usual, at this point in our reality show, it is time to ask our audience for their opinion. What would you do in this situation? 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 What would you do in this situation?
Yeah, I got really new, you know, because 